Hey yo, this is Dash, and today I'm going to be, we're going to do a, something a little different. There's been a few of you guys who have been asking me to fry some chicken. So I have some chicken and we're going to fry. But along with the chicken that I'm going to fry, I'm going to make a side. And this side is going to be one of those everybody in the pool type sides. I just went to the refrigerator and I found what I had in the refrigerator. So let me just show you guys what it is I have. I have some yellow squash. So these are a few of the home grown jalapenos. I have a head of cabbage and I have some mushrooms. And of course, we're gonna be using a full size catering pan and I'm gonna be cooking this out on the trigger. So we're just gonna everybody, let me get the light right. We're just gonna everybody in the pool uh, cut everything up do what I have to do to get that all straightened out and then I'll get it out in the Traeger Once that's taken care of I'll come back inside. I'll get my chicken, which is actually hanging out back here. It was frozen. They are Wingdings, I'm gonna get them fried outside And we're gonna use the indu induction top and we're doing all of this outside because it's too damn hot inside Oh, speaking of hot, that's what this is for. This is a like a sweat cap. It will keep the sweat from pouring down my face, which is one of the reasons why you haven't seen me doing much cooking because it's too daggone hot. Anyway, let's get this all of this stuff cut up and I'll be back in a bit. Hey, yo, this is Dash. Get ready. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna get all of my vegetables cleaned up and I'll be back over here in a second. Okay, so I am back from the sink and let's do this. We shall cut up the zucchini first. So I'm just gonna take off either end and let's bring the trash can over. Waste down into the trash can as I go. All right, so now we have our zucchini. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna get this, the thicker portion, I'm just gonna cut it in half and we'll get it cut down. The smaller portion, we'll just leave it as small rounds. And like I said, everybody, oh, before I do that, I want to spray down this pan with some, we'll use olive oil. There's enough in here, cooking spray. And we'll spray it down enough so we can kind of Get, mix the vegetables in it. Once we're done. All right. All right, so I have my vegetables all, like I said, everybody in the pool. I'm just gonna say screw it, well, unscrew it. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use some olive oil, and I'll work on this later. I'm gonna get some olive oil in here. Just enough to lubricate everything. 
and we're going to mix all of this together. So, in case you don't remember, we have some yellow squash, we have some cabbage, we have some mushrooms. Oh, and I forgot, I want to put some onion in here. So, let me get some onion. We're going to add two whole onions. All right. I guess I got to do that. I'll be right back. All right. Everybody in the pool. All right. So I added my onions, mushrooms, cabbage, yellow squash. And we're gonna get this out on the trigger in a couple minutes. So it should be ready by the time our chicken is done. Mix everything up. In the pool. All right, so I'm wash my hands off real quick because I have oil on them. Okay, so today I'm gonna to be using, this is the Texas Sausage Company. This is their salt, pepper, garlic rub. And we're going to be using some of Uncle Steve's shake. This is the custom bottle. This is the Gator shake we're going to be using. And we're not going to be bashful with either of these because we're going to mix it all around. And same thing with the salt, pepper, garlic. All right. Get a good mix. Everything. Want to make sure I can see the seasoning on everything, and I can. Just want to make sure it's not too salty, and there's not too much seasoning on any one spot. In the pool, stop trying to jump out of the pool. I'm a decent lifeguard, so that's why we get everything back in the pool. All right, looks like this choice, well, this pan choice was a good one. Almost thought that this was going to be too big, but it's not. Now I'm going to get it covered and out on the trigger. So I'm back out at the trigger, like I already had it turned on. So now let's go ahead and get this turned up to 350. And in case you're wondering, I'm using this as a fruit medley from Pit Boss. Get that opened up. Beyond a bit. So I'm back out at the, well, this is Charlotte, but this is gonna be my cook station for, for right now. And I have my raw chicken in here, and I plan to put the cooked chicken in here. So let's move this up just a little bit. So I can have more room on the back side. Put the cooked chicken down in there. Again, here is my raw chicken and the season and ready to go now one of the things that people have a hard time with when frying is making sure the oil is at the correct temperature now i'm using an induction plate here and which i'm just swirling the oil up to see if it's hot hot enough and it is not my oil is sitting at 260 degrees it's a little over 260 it was like 262 263 so let's turn the heat up on the induction plate. I really want my oil to be at 350 degrees and hold it. Now what's gonna happen is you can actually let your oil get a little bit hotter than 350 degrees, but for the most part, I want to be frying at about 350. Reason being, when you put your, your chicken into your oil, whatever it is you're frying into your oil, the temperature is going to drop. The food is gonna suck out some of the heat from whatever it is, or the oil you have. Now, one other thing, you do not want to fill your vessel too high because then it'll splash over. Now you see I have foil covered everything because I just it's easier for me to use a little bit of foil than it is to clean up everything, but faster as well. So I'm only going to put fill my, my Dutch oven one third full. 
Do not put half oil in there. It'll be too much oil. It'll spill out, bubble over all over the top. A third is really all you need to do. And while we wait for this to come up to temperature, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is ready. Again, I'm checking my oil temperature and we're at 280 roughly. I'm just gonna switch the oil around just to make sure that the temperature is even. All right, again, we're only at 280, so we have a little ways to go. I'm gonna turn the induction plate up a little bit more. I don't know what the, what the setting on the induction plate should be for me to get the oil as hot as I needed to. So I'm just gonna kinda ramp up. I don't want it to get too hot. Now you can, you can hear it bubbling away. What that is, I cleaned the Dutch oven out before I came out here and it did not dry fully before I put the oil in there. So there's some, some water down at the bottom that's boiling away. That does, obviously does not mean it's at the temperature we need to cook at. It just means that it's warmer than 212 degrees, which we already know holds true. All right, so we are just about ready. And my oil temperature has reached 350. Hopefully you can see that there. We're looking at 355 degrees. So we are right where we need to be. So we put thing. doing this I don't want to overload the oil so I put usually I'll put no more than 10 pieces in and one at any one time again I don't want the temperature to oil to drop too low because then what you end up doing is you'll get greasy soggy chicken uh, because there's too much oil and the chicken will absorb the oil as opposed to get cooked by it but this is it this is <laughs> this is how it does now one of the things I am going to grab is something to get some of the seasoning out of the pan so that it does not burn because that is one of the things if you don't keep your oil clean you will your oil will burn Now you see I'm just skimming the oil and getting some of the seasonings that have come off of the chicken out of there again so we don't burn the oil so they don't the seasonings don't burn the oil that's it we're just gonna wash this all right and we're back a few moments later so one of the other things that I didn't mention is my wife and I actually have found out that we prefer our chicken wings without breading so all I do is season the chicken and fry it now that being said that might not be everybody's cup of tea but that's how we found that we enjoy our chicken wings most now while one of the things that you can if you don't know when the chicken is done or if you don't have a thermometer when you start to see the chicken start to float and hopefully you can see like that that um, that is a a flat portion is just floating there the flats will obviously finish faster than some of the arm pieces. But you see how this one is floating here and I'm gonna just stab it and we're gonna check the temperature and we're looking at almost 200 degrees in there. So that, they're about ready. I like my chicken a little more well done. So even though it's showing a temperature of closer to 200 and this one I'm hitting the bone and that one's only at 170, this one, I'll hit the bone and we're over 200. Hitting the bone, we're right at about 200. Now what I was saying is, I prefer my chicken a little more well, I prefer my chicken a little more well done. Two very boring minutes later.
फ्लैश बैक एंड अ फ्लैश बैक All right. So that was 10 pieces and that's usually my limit. You can see how much the oil has stopped bubbling. And if I get a temperature probe in there, I'm sure the oil temperature has probably dropped to under 300 degrees. I have the plate. I realized that I could set it to a temperature. So I have the plate set at 370. We'll see if it recovers and gets up to 370, but it's probably still going to be hovering just at or about 350 once it comes back up to temperature. But anyway, I will bring you guys back once this Once these wings are just about done. See you on the bit. All right, so I'm going to check on my vegetables. Now, be careful. You don't want the steam to get you. There's a lot of moisture down in here. Just going to mix everything up. It looks like it's all coming together though. Hopefully you guys can see down in there. I was looking for those jalapenos, but I seem to have found them. I smell them. Vegetables have been in here for about 45 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and uncover them. But they look like they are pretty soft. They feel pretty soft. The cabbage feels soft. I was worried most about the cabbage. We're just going to let it cook. Basically, we're going to let this cook until the chicken finishes. This would have held temperature, but it seems like, yeah, I can touch the top of this, so it's not holding as much temperature as I like. I would like it to to, to have held. I went in the house with when I loaded this up, and the oil temperature had fallen to two hundred and ten degrees. So this is probably not the best way that you should be frying something. Maybe if I was frying it in a more shallow of a pan, it probably would be okay. But this was a fail so far. So what I did was I took the chicken that was in the oil, which was basically being boiled in the oil. It wasn't being fried; it was being boiled in the oil. I took it out. I'm trying to let my oil temperature recover. I'm going to be frying in pieces, two or three pieces at a time, because it doesn't seem like the heat is doesn't seem like it's doing anything. I have this thing maxed out. I'm showing the temperature. What I would like it to hit is 460 degrees. Will it get that hot? Probably not. Anyway, I'm going to clean out the oil, clean some of the bits that are stuck at the bottom out, so we can try to get some of the make sure we're not burning. So there's some of the stuff down at the bottom, and we're going to try again. So part one of this video, a little bit of a fail. Hopefully, I can recover better than this oil did, and we will go from there. Oh, bottom, baby! <laughs> hey, look, guys, 
Down below is listed the P.O. Box. If you want to send us something to try, a sauce, a seasoning, some jerky, feel free, something funny, something for us to try, send it to the P.O. Box below. It's always listed in the description. But Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Join us on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We go live for two hours. In the first hour, we talk about barbecue or something barbecue business related. The second hour, come as you please and bring your flesh. And we talk about anything. And then we talk about anything. All right. Well, not her, but me. So. Sometimes yeah. I pee. Again. Yes, you do. So you want to tell them thank thank them again for watching. Thank you again for watching. And we'll see you. Oh, I'm sorry. And please do subscribe, and we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you Bye. guys.